Hey guys, so as you can see from the title, I'm going to be talking about Blackluster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning, and um, whether or not you should summon it in attack or defense position. Uh, if you're playing Go format, I'm assuming you're uh, familiar with like this card's effect, but if you're not, uh, basically every time you summon this card, you're making a decision between whether or not you want to attack with it or banish a monster with it, and you can only choose one of those effects. If you attack with it, um, if you attack with it and destroy an opponent's monster by battle, you can attack again in a row. Um, I'm making this video because uh, I've seen a lot of people kind of go autopilot and just summon BLS in either attack or defense position, um, but just based out of habit um, and not really taking into consideration uh, their circumstances and the different possibilities. So I want to make this video to discuss some of the pros and cons of summoning it in attack or defense position uh, to make you guys more aware. Before I get into it, um, quick disclaimer, I'm not talking about the situation where you're planning to attack with BLS. Obviously, if you're planning to attack with it, you're going to summon it in attack position, right? And I'm also not talking about the situation where um, you're planning to banish with it, uh, but attack with another monster. If you're planning to banish with it and attack with another monster, then uh, you're probably taking into consideration... Um, that your opponent might have mirror force, right? Like if they have at least one set back row, it's definitely a possibility. And if you are attacking with another monster, you probably want your BLS in defense position so that um, it won't be hit with mirror force. But at that point, unless BLS was already on the field, you should probably just summon the BLS in main phase two um, if you're gonna banish with it, unless you're trying to attack for game um, because you might want to play around torrential tribute, right? So uh, let's get into it. Let's talk about some of the pros of summoning BLS in attack position. I think probably the most obvious reason to summon in attack position is you're preventing it from dying by battle from your opponent's monsters that are between 2,500 and 3,000 attack. Here are some examples of that. Um, Fusilier and Demok are probably um, more relevant like if you're playing against um, a Reasoning Gate deck or something. Or maybe Steingate. Uh, we have Panda here because uh, if your opponent's playing Panda Burn, uh, like all they need to do if you have just BLS on the field is activate Anodrama Trio, and then all of a sudden Panda is 2800 attack and they can get over your BLS, right? So that's why Panda's there. Cyberstein, um, this one's a little bit weird. It's on, it's on, it's on here because, um, of course, your opponent can summon Master of Oz. Uh, which is, I think, 4,200 attack, and just attack over BLS. So putting an attack might be uh, bad if you have 1,200 or less attack. But I just put Cyberstone on here because um, having your BLS in attack kind of limits their options there. Like if BLS is in defense, they can summon Gatling Dragon, which has 2,600, and run over your BLS and maybe pop some of their cards. Um, so it just kind of limits their options by having BLS in attack. Uh, next thing to consider is cards with effects like uh, Ninja Grandmaster Sasuke or Ryukoki. Um, both of them are pretty similar and uh, they both uh, benefit by having your BLS in defense mode, so that's why you'd want to have an attack. Uh, Sasuke, if your BLS is in defense mode, it basically just gets to pop your BLS for free. Uh, Ryukoki, um, if it's in defense mode, it'll also pop it for free, except that they're taking um, 100, 100 damage. And that's because for Sasuke, uh, the effect says at the start of the damage step, if this card attacks a defense position monster, destroy that monster. And Ryukoki says at the end of the damage step, if this card battled a warrior or spellcaster type monster, destroy that monster. So um, putting it in attack makes both of these worse. Um, it's, I mean, Sasuke won't even work at all. Ryukaki will still work, but they're going to take a little bit more damage. And Ryukaki is also going to die by battle, right? Moving on, uh, this is probably a bit of an edge case, but Berserk Gorilla, if your opponent's playing some sort of aggro deck, or maybe even siding in Berserk Gorilla, um, having your BLS in attack mode limits your opponent's options since this card is forced to attack if it's face up on the field. Um, so... Uh, that's just something to call out. And then 
having your BLS attack also makes DD Warrior Lady a little bit worse because they'll take an extra 500 damage um, if they're trying to out your BLS with DD Warrior Lady. Um, and then the final and probably most um, important um, situation to consider, and I think a lot of people, well, a lot of people are probably aware of this, but I think more people should uh, be aware of this. Um, if you summon your BLS in attack mode, then it it forces your opponent to uh, banish it if they have an, if they happen to have their own BLS. If it's in defense mode, uh, they can attack over it and then attack again, possibly for game. If you have three thousand life life points and BLS is the only card in your field, so um, really should take that into consideration, especially if you're playing uh, a chaos deck or really any deck that's running BLS, and you know your opponent has the Light and Dark Engrave for their BLS. So moving on to pros of putting the BLS in defense position, um, they're basically all centered around uh, your opponent crashing their monster into BLS, or rather um, your opponent not being able to crash their monster into BLS because it's in defense. So um, an obvious one is Sangin. They uh, won't be able to crash their Sangin. Um, you have all these different recruiters over here. You know, each of these recruiters has their own corresponding out to BLS. Like Giant Rat has Exiled Force and Injection Fairy Lily. Pyramid Turtle has Ryukaki, which we talked about earlier. Uh, Mystic Tobano has Nudoria. Shining Angel has DD Warrior Lady, right? So if your BLS is in defense position, it prevents your opponent from doing any uh, sacky play like this to out your BLS. And then some, also some other cards that won't work if your BLS is in defense. DD Assailant, because it needs to be destroyed by battle in order to take out your BLS. And then uh, last will. Um, this is probably a bit of an edge case, but if your opponent needs to crash a monster into BLS for last will, um, having it in defense will prevent that from happening. And then finally, the last and probably most important reason to have your BLS in defense position uh, if you're playing a Chaos deck or any deck that runs Chaos Monsters, um, you don't want your opponent to be able to crash their light or dark targets to fuel the grave for the Chaos Monster. Um, so, yeah, something really important to, to consider. Um, yeah, that's about it. This wasn't really meant to be an exhaustive list of all the possible reasons why you'd want BLS in attack or defense. Uh, just like the main ones to take into consideration because, again, as I said earlier, I see a lot of people just slap BLS in defense mode when they summon it in main phase 2, and um, you got to be aware of the reasons why you would or would not want to do that. Generally, I'd say that if you're playing against warriors, you probably don't want to put the BLS in defense position because... Every warrior deck is what is running Sasuke, right? And they have two rotas to get this. Some warrior decks are even playing two Sasuke, right? So it's probably not a good idea. Um, and then also, um, oh, sorry. But then if you're playing Chaos decks, you probably want to put the BLS in defense position most of the time because you don't want your opponent to feel the grave for their Chaos monsters. I suppose if they have like no light or dark targets in their grave, uh, you're probably pretty safe putting it in attack mode, but um, I think defense against Chaos Dex is a pretty safe bet most of the time. So yeah, let me know if I missed any um, you know, important scenario in the comments. Um, even if it's like an edge case scenario, it'd still be interesting to know. And um, I guess the last thing that you might want to think about when you're choosing the position to summon BLS in is like what position you want BLS to be in in the future or next turn, right? This is probably a super edge case, but say for example, you summon BLS in defense mode initially. Then next turn, you want to attack with it, so you switch it into attack position. If your opponent like book of moons it for whatever reason, then it's going to be stuck face down because you've already changed this position, right? But if it was already in attack position, and then next turn, uh, your opponent Book of Moons it for some reason, maybe they had a set Book of Moon, and you uh, MST or Heavy Stormed it, and they Book of Moon the BLS before you declare an attack with it, you can always just flip it back face up since you haven't changed its battle position, right? So uh, just something to think about uh, the position that you want BLS to be in 
in the future, like after the turn that you summon it. So, yep, that's about it. That's everything I wanted to talk about. Thanks, guys. Peace.